Good afternoon or good evening. Welcome to uh, College of Health Science and Technology Distinguished uh, Alumni Award tonight. Mm -hmm. We begin today's ceremony by acknowledging that the land on which RIT sits is the traditional territory of the Anadagua Ku, or the people of the Great Hill. In English, they are known as Sinecan people, the keep of the Western Door. Today, with the Moka, Cayuga, Anadagua, Oneida, and Tuscarora, the uh, Seneca makes up the uh, servant Ana O Shiki Ni Confederates. Welcome and thank you for joining us this evening as our as we honor this year's College of Health Sciences and Technology Distinguished Alumni Award recipient, Todd Wen Hong. I'm Dr. Yong Tai Wang, the Dean of the College of Health Sciences and Technology. The Distinguished Alumni Award is presented annually to a graduate who has brought distinction at the highest level to the college and to RIT through professional, community, and philanthropic achievement. Todd Van Hong joins a selected group, select group of exceptional alumni who inspire us through their innovation, creativity, and leadership. RIT's distinguished alumni have built legacies and improved the world through their contributions to the advancement of their field. This alumni creates new possibilities, paving the way for our students' bright future. With alumni like uh, Ted, RIT is attracting imaginative, multi-talented, and diverse students. I'm proud of to say that we have welcomed a record number of first-year undergraduate students this year, highest number in so many years, who also represents the most academically accomplishment group of the new students in, in our history. We strive to be a place where our alumni are proud to call their alma mater. Today, midway through our 2025 strategic plan, RIT is on the firm path to realize all we set out to accomplish and more. We are becoming the university we want to be and alumni like you are helping us to get there. Also, helping us to get there is transforming RIT, the campaign for greatness, which currently stands at 88% of our 1 billion blended campaign goal. We truly appreciate all this who make it possible for RIT to cross the finish line. I'm excited to see that we have Senator Society members here with us this evening. The Senator Society plays a vital role in funding RIT's most pressing and immediate needs across the campus. Senator members provided unrestricted resources that allow the university to offer scholarship and take the advantage of academic and students' life opportunity that are hallmark of RIT experience. Ted, you bring honor, distinction, and pride to the university and RIT community. These awards recognize the outstanding work you have done both professionally and for RIT. Ted, a 30-year veteran, of medical or emergency medical services industry, currently serve as the chief operation 
Office of Global Medical Response, GR, GMR, the world's largest medical transportation company. With more than 37,000 employees and a fleet of 7,000 ground vehicles, 100 plus fire vehicle and 400 plus road wing and fixed wing aircraft. GMR provides end-to-end -end medical tra transportation, fire services, integrated healthcare solutions, and the disaster response services across the US and the world, engaging in over 30 million patient interactions per year. Prior to being named GMR's COO, Ted led GMR's Grand Transportation Subdietary American Medical Response, AMR, as president and CEO. AMR is the leading provider of grand medical transportation in the US, transporting more than 4.8 million patients nationwide in critical emergency and non-emergency situation each year. It is also prime contractor for FEMA. Prior to leading the whole of AMR as president and CEO, Ted served as CEO of the company's South region. He began his career in the emergency medical services industry as an EMT and later become a national registered paramed paramedic. Ted has been a significant support and a stockholder in the long-running running RIT project led by interior design professor Mary Golden and the students with multi-disciplines background. The students are redesigning a Nanoto unit in Honduras Hospital for efficiency and are uh, reconfiguring a vehicle into a specialized uh, neonatal ambulance to transport low bath, no birth, weight babies from remote area to Honduras to the hospital. Ted also support RIT ambulance, both Mary and uh, Rita represents representatives are with us this evening and they will offer remark in a few minutes. I know we are so excited for what the future holds with your continual encouragement with the university. Your success is truly our success. On behalf of the entire RIT community, congratulations to Ted. I now have the pleasure to introduce Mary Golden, faculty from the College of Arts and Design. Thank you, Dr. Wang, for that nice introduction. And to start our conversation for Ted this evening, we'll play the uh, ambulance video, please. I personally view design as an opportunity to do something good for people or do something that impacts the world in a positive way. It was something amazing to see how the school was bringing something to a community to help. This has been an extremely emotional and rewarding experience in every possible way. It makes you feel good. It makes you know that when you get up in the morning there's a reason and that hopefully some child or some life gets saved that makes a difference in our world. The project originally came into the interior design department. We were invited to design a hospital remodel and addition to the NICU at Hospital Escuela. And my initial trip to Honduras, that's where we really discovered that the hospital is really only one piece of the puzzle. At the time, there weren't any ambulances in a formal sense like we have here in the United States. And in Honduras, it's very mountainous terrain. 
Um, they have to be able to get the babies that are recently born with really critical needs down the mountains into the hospital there locally. The babies were being transported in essentially a bassinet without a provider in the back. We were finding that that was particularly problematic. The babies were just sometimes not making it. So with that, the idea came to create a specific transport vehicle that was just dedicated to neonatal care, and it's intended to go off-road. So to have a custom design Land Cruiser like that really allows them to get up and back down. To turn, take those capabilities that are in a big ambulance, put it in a Land Cruiser, and then make all of that work. That's really the hard part because you don't have very much space. This project is particularly exemplary of design for good. Bringing something like the ambulance design to RIT was a really great opportunity for our students to actually work on something meaningful and real and substantial and something that brought them together with their colleagues across the campus. And that was a really great educational opportunity for all of the students. I wanted to believe that design had a greater purpose. Just the idea that something that me and my teammates were able to come up with on paper, the fact that it's gonna help people, that's probably the biggest reward. As part of the educational process, we met with the local GMR team in Rochester, and they came out, they brought an ambulance out, they took us through the vehicle. So that was amazing to see the students, they were so passionate. I just found such a desire to help and work more with RIT as uh, alumni with RIT. It was a project that I, I personally felt I could really help with. And then uh, bringing obviously GMR in as a company to help was also important. So we're design building on site like this so that we can capitalize on every square inch within the space because there is so much that we're trying to put in. We're taking most everything that's in a full-size ambulance and we're putting it in that very small vehicle in that Land Cruiser. We're using the Ferno baby pod and we'll actually transport the babies in the baby pod. We can customize that with uh, gear that maybe they're not gonna have ever seen before in Honduras. You know, in mountainous terrain, it is different. It has to have the oxygen systems in there, cardiac monitors and defibrillators for neonatal babies so it can do some of that more advanced care. We're trying to optimize the interior to make sure that they have backup for everything. One of the really great things about the RIT Hope for Honduras project is that it really is about collaboration and partnership. I love working with the RIT design team. It gives us new experiences and new people to talk to, even new ideas and new ways of doing things. In this case, getting neonatal babies that have just been born down into a care center in Honduras takes a lot of people to make that happen, and it's exciting to be part of that. There are people out there who are going to use it and who know that there's so much love put into it. Words cannot really describe that feeling. It's absolutely overwhelming in the best way possible. It really showcases the best of what we can do when we come together and we learn each other's language and we cross boundaries and borders and look at each other from a humane perspective. I do think it represents goodness of people and humanity. I was so humbled to be asked today to honor Ted Van Horn, um, my project partner, friend, and colleague, as he receives his Distinguished Alumni Award at RIT. Not only is Ted a distinguished alumni, he's also a distinguished human, which makes him all the more deserving of this special award. I like to think that everything related to Hope for Honduras happens for a reason. Every person we meet each new challenge and every new opportunity hold meeting and are purposeful. Meeting Ted is one of those purposeful moments and was pure synchronicity. I had the pleasure of meeting Ted when he visited campus for the RIT Ambulance 50th reunion. We were introduced in the elevator lobby outside of my interior design studio where our senior capstone students were creating a conceptual mock-up for a neonatal ambulance. 
My weary seniors shared our story and their vision for creating a specialized ambulance dedicated to serving the critically ill infants of Honduras's poorest people in an effort to reduce infant mortality. Ted's commitment to supporting the students and giving back to RIT was instantaneous. In a flash, the local AMR team was called in for a demo and walked through of vital systems. By the end of the day, the wheels were set in motion and a long-term plan was underway to realizing our neonatal ambulance as a first-generation prototype. Ted, you've championed the Hope for Honduras ambulance and the result is beyond what we ever dreamed that it could be. This important effort to help reduce infant mortality would not have been possible without you and the support of all of your folks at GMR. Words cannot express the depth of gratitude we feel here at RIT or from the Hope for Honduras team and from our friends in Honduras who have, you have yet to meet. Your personal generosity, the Van Horn Family Foundation, coupled with the over 500 hours from your team, contributed to this project, which is truly remarkable. Your leadership and resolve over the last four years that we've known one another have led to the creation of a uniquely specialized vehicle, one that we're really proud to share with the people of Honduras. I personally thank you. And I thank you on behalf of the students in the College of Art and Design and across RIT and our colleagues here tonight and for being a visionary leader and for a dedicated alumni. So what's next? <laughs> this was the question Ted asked me as the ambulance photo shoot at Next Fleet was wrapping up. I remember pausing and looking at Ted and he asked me again a bit more definitively, so what's next? I can probably count the number of times on one hand someone has asked me this question. I recall being both stunned and thrilled by it. And I said, oh, you're really serious, aren't you? And again, another long-term plan was put into place. I cannot wait to see what's next. I feel the question exemplifies who Ted is as a person. Ted, you are a remarkable, highly effective person, one of definitive action and justice. You are also incredibly genuine, putting anyone you meet at ease. And most importantly, you are a person who exudes joy. Your enthusiasm for doing good in the world is contagious, and you are an inspiration to us all. Ted, congratulations on your well-deserved Distinguished Alumni Award. Thank you, Ted. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the RIT Ambulance. Rita team. To introduce myself, my name is Connor Griffin. I'm a third year biomedical engineering student and uh, the vice president of RIT Ambulance. So, challenge coins have a somewhat mixed and uncertain history, with many origins linked to exemplary military service. Today, they signify a sense of pride and dedication to any organization. They are bestowed to members who have demonstrated themselves worthy of carrying a piece of the organization with them wherever they go, and allow them to identify themselves as such. While our agency didn't have challenge coins when you were a member, Ted, you have continued to serve as a life member, and I can't think of anyone who deserves one more and who I would rather have carrying one of these with them each day and to identify themselves as a life member of our agency. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jack Andrucci. I actually graduated from RIT last year, 2021, from the Biomedical Sciences Program. Uh, I continue to serve the RIT community on, as an active member of the RIT Ambulance, and I'm also a lieutenant with the American Medical Response of Rochester, New York. Um, in addition to the challenge going, Ted, uh, 
we'd like to also present you with the graduation stole to honor your devotion to the RIT ambulance and the RIT community. We gift all of our members, or all of our graduating members, a stole so that they may have a tangible sentiment to carry with them for the rest of their lives that shows their involvement in the agency and their dedication to service. It allows a part of the agency to be with you during your day of recognition. And in addition to that, uh, early, earlier this year, we were able to gift you some other Rita swag and merch. Um, we got you a go bag, however. Uh, it's missing nameplates. So we went ahead and had a couple nameplates meant for it, or made for you. They're Velcro compatible. We got you two of them to make sure whatever mood you're feeling in, you're all set. So. And with that, we'd uh, like to invite Dean Wong back up. Thank you all for sharing your words of congratulation to Ted. I'm so proud of and honored to recognize Ted as this year's College of Health Science and Technology Distinguished alarm. Ted, would you please come up and uh, share a few words? <laughs> Very humbled. Um, I could probably, I'm going to go around the room a little bit and thank some people and bring back some memories. And um, you know, I took a very different journey than I think most did. And and um, to, to come here today is kind of where that, I hope, is, as Mary says, isn't the end. There's just probably the middle chapter of what I hope I can continue to do and help with RIT. But thanking Mary Golden and really Linda, when you first you know, met, we met about talking about what more can I do to help other than donating constantly for more ambulances at RIT, uh, making sure that RIT Ambulance always keeps an ambulance here. And then it was this conversation, and it was just amazing to walk in to the design room, industrial design, I'm gonna talk a bit about that and see my old desk from like 25 years ago, still there up in the design studio and just down the hallway was this mock-up and have it all come together at once, being in the ambulance, the design team now just happened to be building an ambulance and going, you know what, I could really help with that. And then right away it really clicked in and it's been just a phenomenal journey for the last four years, not only for me, but for the company and how we bring that and get that involved um, and do something good and you know you say what's next but you realize how many phone calls we've gotten about in, in internationally that want a vehicle like that and recognize our ambulance development and build location there in Mineral Wells it does about 300 ambulances it builds a year and it does remodel and chassis work. This is what they do is craftsmanship work and it's you know from a school standpoint and everything else from the design standpoint that's what really you know, it was so amazing to see them all bring that together and do something that no one's ever done before and really, you know, help with that. And it was just an amazing, just the time of this all happening and actually pulling it all off in COVID, which is a whole another story, which was just amazing. And, um, you know, obviously from the RIT ambulance, it's just great to see, you know, first thing we had to do when we pulled into campus, we drove over to the ambulance station. They, we caught them coming out and I'm like, stop, we got to get a picture over here first with you guys and see the station because, you know, that location to me was the second one of where I was at here at RIT. The first one was over in Ellington Hall, shorelined outside, sweeping the snow off for every single call. And to have a garage was a big thing. But see that's still there from when the, some of us that are here now pull that together and what you've been doing there, that you're continuing that and that same spirit that you have for service while you're going to school and volunteering here is amazing. And uh, a number of my fraternity brothers here from Phi Sigma Kappa, and to me that was the balance of my life too. So it was a lot about the service, a lot about the school and the education, but to have a fraternity also of brothers behind you. And um, tough part when you're in EMS and you're a paramedic, you don't see the best of people's days. It's usually the toughest days. And there's a lot of things that you hit you with. And for me, the fraternity, I'd go back into the fraternity and I'd be able to have conversations with people and it had nothing to do with what I saw it that day. And it was a relief of, and actually let me really be, uh, have that college time here. And it was uh, a big part of it. There's a Theta Xi brother over here that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But um, that was our alternate kind of environment and it allowed for some balance in life. And 
Um, a big thing of what I believe in is, uh, you know, the health and wellness of our caregivers, our paramedics, and um, it's a really tough job to be in, and certainly with COVID. So everybody has to have that balance. And to me, that fraternity, the brotherhood, and you all are being in that brotherhood yourself now, and you all are gonna go different ways, and some of your best friends will be the ones you have now, and some of the ones that I have now, too, all over the U.S. And I tell a story I ran into uh, during one October when the mass shooting in Vegas. I flew in that night, or the next morning, during the, right after the shooting, to be with our teams there. And one of the supervisors that pulled up, who just happened to work for us, was a Michigan Phi Sigma Kappa brother, no idea. But he knew I was, and it was, you know, one of those moments of being damn proud that I'm there with this guy who just dealt with the whole night and how I could support him. And, uh, you know, that family of brotherhood is so important. And then I got uh, Ed Cerrone over here who's visited, um, Monroe County Sheriff, and my, one of my partners. Uh, really great that you're here, Paula Pena. And Ed and I would drive to get our medic in Buffalo from RIT 90 minutes twice a week to get our paramedic in Buffalo. Can you believe that? We drove all the way there and back, but that's what we did for a year and a half, and one of my best friends and just an amazing, amazing gentleman. And, uh, you know, the stories that we have when you're in the, in the ambulance and when you're in school, it sticks with you forever. And, uh, you know, those years of just driving around campus right now, the memories that comes back every time you come here, I'm sure. I remember that spot, remember that spot, and it's amazing. And, uh, you know, for me, the, and this, it's, it's, this is interesting because I'm not – you know, the health system side of it and my management is one thing, but the industrial design side of my being is why this meant so much to me. I took a very different path. You know, it was, uh, came to school to be in industrial design, go through all the four years of that. And uh, the last semester, the last day, we had a pretty bad suicide off of a building. Literally the same day I had to do a presentation at Fisher Price for my design work. But the, the professor saw me going more out to people that maybe had lost their finger in the wood shop or other medical calls across the campus and actually being in my industrial design class. And I mean, it was just, the pager was going off constantly and I was going running off and um, helping people versus more being in the design because my passion was in helping people in healthcare. And uh, that night I was late for the final presentation. I actually damaged my presentation on the way out to help the student at two in the morning and uh, wasn't able to get back in time. And the professor in industrial design came up to me and said, you don't want to be doing this for the rest of your life. You want to be doing something else. And he gave me a D for done. And I wasn't, and I'm not kidding. And it's, you know, Ed and them all know I was on campus that rest of the summer, but I ended up, you know, deep down that professor knew I was not, you know, I love design. And so much of my job and what I do now is design. I mean, all the ambulance, I mean, everything we do is entrepreneurial work. Everything we do is innovation. That is a big part of where healthcare is going right now. And, but that moment set me on a different path. And um, thank God for that moment. If I, you know, but again, it was at the, at the mercy, unfortunately, of someone else's horrible day. Um, and, and how that progresses through, you know, for me, really set that career path. And now, you know, obviously from a, a standpoint of being able to give back and hopefully, you know, uh, help other people find their path, know that there's no path from A to B. There's always, you know, a different direction you may go, but just make sure you keep your true north where you're going and um, recognize that as long as you're going in that north star, you'll get there. And it may not be what everybody thinks, but you'll, you'll make it there in the end. And, you know, um, e. Cassandra Jordan, who's not here tonight, but I'm so glad she's well, and she's, I guess, in North Carolina with family. And um, she meant a lot to me as a health system administrator the, you know, I was telling the ambulance uh, team that was over there, you just look up top, and her office was right above the garage, so she knew every time the thing was going out, and if it wasn't washed, or if it wasn't, uh, you know, you guys better not be messing around out in the garage there, because she's up there and knowing, but she was such a mentor through that process, because I was running the school ambulance, I was doing work the fraternity, I was supposedly being, doing all the school work in industrial design, and all that other activity, staying here, you know, but she kept me going, um, engaged and remembering, you know, in healthcare, it's about that service to your, your, your family, it's a service to your community, um, and being true to yourself. And I think, you know, the management team, there's some, uh, Eric Rhodes here, Tom Maxian runs out of Buffalo, and Eric was a paramedic and also here, a graduate here at RIT, and, um, you know, came in a year before me, but he jumped in front of the ambulance, I'm going to be part of the ambulance, and famous story for him, but that was how he wanted to join in in the, in the ambulance squad. So, um, you know, you end up with that environment. RIT certainly does that for people bringing in that community and bringing in the relationships, and it's just such an amazing steward for what they do in the community. So I can't be more thankful for this, but it's not just me. It was 
a lot of people that not only helped me get through that, but then, uh, you know, where I think this is going. And, and certainly what this hope for Honduras and this ambulance is just one of what's next uh, to do. And just love to see this still the passion that the Amiens teams have and the fraternity brothers and everybody else because it's, you know, we're going to wonder, we're going to come back and who's going to be, which one of you is going to be up here 30 years from now? You know, uh, hopefully we're going to be coming back to say that because one of you, you know, led from the front and believed in what you do and it's about patient care. It's about being good service to community and being truthful. So, you know, you'll get there too, but let's, you know, hopefully we'll all be here 30 years from now, right? So... But again, thank you so much. It's an incredible honor. I really, really appreciate it. I um, wish my family could have been here too, my wife and kids. Uh, you know, obviously when you're raising them, I have a, that's been the other balance is 11-year-old, the 13-year-old, and the 14-year-old, and juggling everything we do with that too. And that's that balance that we have to have. So again, the family is really passionate about helping through this. So again, thank you so much. Thank you, Ted, for your wonderful speech. And now I would like to introduce Ike Jordan and to say a few words about Ted, who is, a, I assume, is a close friend of Ted. <laughs> Soon to be even more. Cowboys, hey now. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ike Jordan, and I'm happy tonight to represent my mom, E. Cassandra Jordan, with whom Ted worked for so many years while she was the Director of Student Health Services here at IRT for almost 30 years. And even on a more special note, now that I know that Ted is in Dallas, home of the best football team that used to be, <laughs> in another lifetime that was, um, I'll be coming down, don't worry, so okay. These are the words from, from my mom. Ted, if I coulda, I woulda be there with you tonight, sharing your joy and mine as you were honored by your college, the College of Health and of Sciences and Technology, the University at Large, and shh, the RIT Ambulance as Distinguished Alumni of the Year. Well, maybe I stretched things a bit, but neither of these three entities can deny that this recognition reflects the enormous and indelible impact that you've had on each of us, not only as a student, but during the years since leaving the physical site. I am so proud that you are being honored in this way, for the Ted that I knew was not only a good student, but a good person. You were indeed the epitome of what we all hope to see in students as they develop, strengthen knowledge, and skills in preparation for life in the world of work by simply living as valued contributors to humanity. You, Ted, were a superb leader and follower within the RIT Ambulance Corps, not only providing compassionate care to those with whom you served, but in helping to make and maintain RITA as a first-class emergency medical service operation, which was and still is second to none. I am sure that you remember, as I, that sometimes the commitment to the core often became the priority for some members, thus making studies secondary. This led to some difficulties for all of us. I will always be grateful for your role in helping me to help others realize that being a good member of the core meant being a good student first, and that there were consequences imposed by the leadership when this was not always demonstrated. Thanks for your unwavering support to me in efforts to keep that message front and center. You accomplished more in that area through your example than I ever could. Although no longer on site, I still hear of your continued guidance, support, both in tangible and intangible ways, and remote participation, which is very much respected and appreciated. Of course, before retirement, it was easier to be made aware of through direct hearsay of your continued involvement. Now that pandemic restrictions are lessening, it is my hope that I can again stay abreast of current core happenings, as well as members past and present. But if not, the memories of knowing and working with you and the many during my almost 30 year tenure with RIT Ambulance, your personal accomplishments, valuable societal contributions and demonstrated compassion will always be very special and dear to me. Best wishes while here, and my sincere congratulations on this, your well-deserved recognition and honor, 
Hope to see you in a return visit before too long. Sincerely, Cassandra Jordan. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ike. Mm -hmm. So that concluded the ceremony tonight. And thank you all for coming this evening. And congratulations again to Ted. <laughs>